So we're going through this code repo. I haven't been through it in a year, and so it's all a bit new to me again. But we're going to talk about uh, servers and understanding servers. And if you want access to this whole code base, it's in this course here at Greater Commons, including all those notes right there. Uh, so with web programming, these terms are all synonymous for a server. A router, a request router, a multiplexer, a MUX, a serve MUX, a server, an HTTP router, and just add HTTP in front of all that stuff, right? But so these are all different terms that you hear for servers. And multiplexer, a multiplexer is kind of the one that is a loop looper. Multiplexer. So multiplexer in engineering is like something that does switching, right? Like this stuff comes in and we're going to switch it to some other thing, right? You can see these things, inputs getting switched to some other output, right? So that's kind of what a router does or a server, right? Things come in and it handles it and, you know, sends stuff out to somewhere else. So that's the first thing you should know because when you look in the documentation, GoDoc, dot org net http and uh, let me just look at the index here All right and then if we look for mux All right we have default serve mux and serve mux and mux serve mux and so when I first started learning all this I'm like what is a mux <laughs> so now you know, a mux is a server, okay? And then there's this entire request response thing. So of servers, right, client, server, clients make requests and then the server receives those requests and then responds to the client. So request response messages are similar. Both messages consist of a request response line. So they have a request or response line. Zero or more header lines a blank line and an optional message body. So that's what makes up a request or a response. So an HTTP request has the request line, the headers, optional mes message body. And the request line is made up of a method, a space, the request URI, a space, the HTTP version, and then carriage return line feed. So an example of a request HP request, the method might be get, so there's different methods like get or post, right? So, you know, get or post. And then the request space, and then there's, well, the space is right there. And then the request URI, URI is just another way to say URL, uniform resource. I don't know what the I stands for. What's it stand for? Information? I don't know. And then the HTTP version. So the most current version of HTTP is HTTP2. And uh, here we go. So this is what HTTP1 with one second latency works like looks like okay one HTTP 1.1 with one second latency because each request and response is it's a uh, it's one after the other right you get one then you make the next then you make the next it's serial Here's HTTP2 with one second latency. I'll let this finish. Here's HTTP2 with one second latency. H, the takeaway, because it happens like you can make multiple requests and responses at the same time. That's a lame explanation of it, but that's my, my, the extent of my understanding. So HTTP2 is smoking fast. And guess which server programming language uh, is built to take advantage of HTTP2? Go. 
So, and then here, that's your request, and then you have your response. So the response is going to have a status line, it's going to have headers, and an optional message body. What are headers? So, like, if I open up Developer Tools in Chrome, which I did with the keyboard shortcut, but you can go to More Tools and Developer Tools, and then I have my network, and if I make this request, right, I get all of this stuff. Just to do the whole page. So this is like my waterfall of things loading right here. And all this stuff, I still don't have a total grasp on it. But So go for tiles. And then if I click on that, whoops. If I click on that, it brings up this over here. And so there, there is the header. So the request URL, the request method was get, the status code was 200. And here are the response headers. So that's general, sorry. Here are the response headers. Content type, date, status. Here are the request headers. So this came in on the request. Authority, method, path, scheme, accept, text HTML. Right, like this is what the browser would accept. Um, encoding, the kind of compression the browser would accept that the server could send back, languages that it wants back, right? So these headers came through on the request, and then the response wrote these headers, and, uh, and this is just general information. And the general information looks kind of like status line stuff. We have the method, we have the URL, so we have the, the method, the URL, and then the HTTP2. So that's uh, the request and the response. And uh, you can look at headers, like a Wikipedia, different headers. HP header fields are components of the header section. Field names, field values. So accept. Right, different headers. So some of the headers we saw were like response header, content type. So here's content type. The media of the body of the request used with post and put requests. And uh, you can use Google Chrome DevTools to inspect that. You can also use curl the command line to inspect it. And then here's just a little documentation that talks about all that stuff more. So there's uh, specifications like um, requests for comments. So request for comments 7230. Just looking for the source on it. So here, request for comments. You can read about request for comments. So uh, information communications technology, a request for comment is a type of publication from the tech community. RFCs may come from many bodies, including Internet Engineering Task Force. Uh, and so if you do like RFC 7230, you get the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, I Internet Engineering Task Force Tools. And so there's RFC 7230. And, uh, and then in here, we have, um, oh, Uniform Resource Identifier. There we are. And, uh, and then we have Message Format, Request Line, Status Line. So maybe if we looked at message format, I'm just 
looking here, message format. Start line, header field, carriage return line feed, message body. So, uh, you know, that's where that stuff starts to get defined, but just wanted to kind of like tune you into that so that you could take a look at it. RFC 7230. And uh, I guess that's all that's worth showing there. Anyhow, I'm no expert on it, but that's a nice little resource to know about. It's good to know about RFCs and RFC 7230, and that's where the headers and all that stuff gets defined. And in the next video, we're going to kind of look a little bit at some of that stuff here that we just saw, request line headers and body and uh, status line, headers, and body. We'll look at that in the next video in action.